You are listening to Cosmos, written by Jeff Carrera, read by the author. Chapter 2 When I heard the shower water stop, I called through the door. I put your clothes in the washer, and I left some clean things of mine here on the floor for you to wear. I'm going back into the kitchen to finish getting some food together. You can open the door a crack and grab the clothes and come back to the kitchen when you're ready. I walked down the hall, and as I did, I heard the bathroom door open behind me. A few minutes later, Destiny walked into the kitchen. She was wearing my Boston College sweatshirt, and it fit her better than I thought it would. Now that she was clean, I could see her beautiful features even better. Gone was the homeless look that had hung around her in the park. She looked like any respectable business person on her day off, or a college student hanging around the dorm. Her black, curly hair hung down just below her shoulder. The tight black curls bounced happily as she walked. Although she was only a little over five feet tall, she was not a petite girl. She was curvy and round. There was a softness to her, especially in her eyes. Thanks for the shower, she said, looking up behind me. She seemed to be talking half to me and half to my cosmic self, who was, of course, hovering behind me, half in and half out of the room. I call him Cosmos. I used to talk to him all the time, but he never answered, so I stopped trying. Tell me where he came from. First eat something, I said, handing her a plate of pasta I'd just cooked. You look like you could use some hot food. I motioned with my eyes, and she sat down at the small table in the kitchen. Aren't you eating? she asked, noticing that there was only one plate. I ate before I went to the park. Satisfied with this, she started eating. She ate quickly, hungrily, but not impolitely. She had class. She kept her elbows off the table and chewed carefully with her mouth closed. As I watched her eat, I wondered who this woman was and how she had come to have no place to live. After she finished two plates of pasta, we walked into the living room. I sat down in a chair. She sat opposite me. I saw as soon as she sat down that her eyes were glued to Cosmos. Her mouth was slightly open, and her gaze was dreamy. Can you teach me? she asked, gesturing with her eyes toward Cosmos. I turned to follow her gaze, and there was Cosmos, his big, translucent, galaxy of a body, half in the room and half extending through the walls. Looking at his body was like looking at the night sky. It was mesmerizing, and she was certainly mesmerized by him. Teach you what? Teach me to do that, she gestured with a head nod again toward Cosmos, whose featureless face was looking straight at me. I don't think it works that way. How did you learn? I didn't. I could go there when I was a small child, but I lost the ability to expand into my cosmic self when I was about four. It came back to me on a retreat a couple of decades ago. I was sitting in meditation, and I expanded until the whole universe was inside me. I felt an overwhelming sense of being home again, and I knew this was who I really was. It only lasted a few minutes, but it changed everything. A few years ago, Cosmos showed up. I don't know what he is. I guess he's some kind of projection of my cosmic self. I don't have any idea how I do that, or even if it's me that's doing it. She was staring at Cosmos with rapt attention the whole time I spoke, and suddenly I was curious. Why are you staring at him? What are you looking at? I see eternity there. I feel the inner expansion in myself. I can't stop looking. I haven't felt this way for a long time. I never thought I would find it again. What are you talking about? Have you seen one of these before? No, she said, looking at me, as if the magic spell that Cosmos had held over her was at least temporarily broken. In the app. In the Eternity app. Do you use it? No, I don't use that thing. To tell you the truth, I didn't know it was still around. It went away for a while. But then about a year ago, the 2.0 version was released. It was so much better. Then she turned again toward Cosmos, 
But this, this is even better than that, and it's free. Oh my God, you sound like a drug addict. I've used drugs. Believe me, there's no drug this good. It was then that I seemed to wake up out of a spell of my own. I looked at destiny, and then at cosmos, and then around the room. What was I doing? Why had I invited this strange woman into my house? I didn't know the first thing about her. And now she was starting to scare me. I felt like I was waking up from a dream. In dreams, everything makes sense. But when you wake up, you realize that none of it really made any sense. It only made sense in that dream sense way. It all feels reasonable while you're in it. But later, you see that a lot of it never really made any sense at all. I guess life is that way, too. Can you teach me how to do that? She said again, nodding toward Cosmos. It was clear she wasn't really listening to anything I said. Or maybe she just ignored what she didn't want to hear. I told you. I don't have any idea how I do that, or even if I do that. What kind of retreat were you doing when it appeared? You are persistent. I was doing a meditation retreat run by the teacher I was working with at the time. What teacher? She said absentmindedly, without moving her gaze from Cosmos. I was working with a teacher named Dr. Free at the time. Suddenly her head snapped in my direction. She stopped and looked at me with intense focus and a newly renewed interest. Holy shit! You worked with Dr. Free? You mean like, in person? Yeah. Why, you know him? Do I know him? Hell yes. He invented eternity. He's the app master. You didn't know that? No, I didn't know that, I said, trying to hide my surprise. And I can tell you, he did not invent that app. I know him who invented it, and it wasn't him. He isn't even a real doctor. He doesn't know the first thing about apps. My mind was reeling. How would I miss this? Dr. Free was the master of the Eternity app? Wow. He must have bought the license from Harry Harrelson. What was Harrelson doing selling the tech to Free? Harrelson knew exactly what Free would do with it. We had sworn to do the opposite. We were the champions of real spiritual surrender and authentic awakening. What was Harrelson thinking? Or maybe Free had stolen it. I wouldn't put that past him. Tell me about the Eternity app, I asked. I can't believe you don't have it. I had it when it first came out, but I deleted it. Oh, so you missed the 2.0 version. The 2.0 is way better. Well, that's what I've heard anyway. I never used the original. This one is supposedly way more powerful, and it includes live streaming, so we could all be part of one huge global community. It was so great. I wish I was still on it. If it's so great, why aren't you still on it? I got banned. What do you mean banned? I got kicked off the app. I've been blocked from getting back on. Why? I ran out of money. I couldn't pay anymore. I was just gazing all the time. But the app is designed to find gazers who never donate and ban them. So I got banned. And now I can't get on anymore unless I pay a setup fee. Well, that sounds like Dr. Free, I said disgustedly. Look, the app has to protect its own existence. If it allowed people to just gaze all day for free, no one would ever donate. I'm not stupid. I know it's not all great. Look, that app ruined my life. I know how bad it can be. But still, it gave me so much. I wouldn't know what I know today without it. As much as it cost me... I wouldn't want to go back to the way I was before I knew the Eternal. Destiny sounded utterly convinced of every word. What are you talking about? How did an app ruin your life? I had a good job. I worked for the city. I was a social services manager. Someone told me about this app that would open you up spiritually. I was going through a hard time. I had lost someone close to me. I felt disconnected and alone. I'm sure if that wasn't the case, I never would have tried the app, but I did. I downloaded it, and I did a sample gaze. The first gaze changed everything. It was just like you described. 
I opened the app and saw the field of stars. It was the 2.0 version, so you gazed with headphones to listen to the audio track. I was suddenly as big as the universe. Tears were streaming down my cheeks. I was home. I was the universe. I was the source of love and life and light. I was clarity incarnate, and my heart opened to everyone and everything. For the first sample hour, I just cried and cried. I saw my friend, the one who had died. I talked to him. He was there, in the app, in the universe, in eternity. She paused for a moment and looked toward Cosmos. I know you know what I'm talking about. He's the same thing. I feel it when I look at him. Not as strong. But if I had the audio track, I bet it would be. So how'd that wreck your life? After I used up my sample time, I started listening to some of the live streams. I learned all about the app and about Dr. Free and about how he had invented it to save the world from darkness. I was so excited and I needed to reconnect with the expansion, so I started to buy gaze hours. I gazed more and more. That was all I wanted to do. I started ignoring my work until I got fired. I couldn't get it together to get another job, and a few weeks ago I got evicted from my apartment. That's when I started living with friends. I couch surfed for a few weeks until no one I knew would have me. I've been on the streets for about five days, and I got banned from the app two days ago. I've been wandering around, praying for a solution. She stopped at this point and looked at Cosmos. Tears came to her eyes and ran down her cheeks. Then she looked at me, eyes filled with tears. Don't you see? You and him? You're the answer to my prayers. You're the solution. The look in her eyes was not like anything I'd ever seen before. It was desperate, but also so full of love. This woman loved me, or rather she loved something that I represented to her, or she loved Cosmos, or the Eternal. She loved something. That look scared me. Actually, I had seen it before. It was the look I had for Dr. Free when I first met him. It was a look that signaled that I was ready to give up everything to be with him. I knew what was going on with her. Now that she was open to her true self, Nothing else would ever be enough. Will you teach me? I'm ready. Okay, look, I'm not a teacher, at least not like that. I don't know how to teach that, but I get it. You're open. You found that place in yourself that is pure and free and whole. This world with all its division and pain feels like hell, but you gotta go slow. There's a lot more to this than you think. It's not so black and white as the experience of cosmic expansion makes it seem. This life is a miracle. You can't forget that. Being here, being human, matters. Then you will teach me, she squealed happily, jumping up and throwing her arms around me. Hold on a minute, I said as I gently pushed her a few inches away from me. I've been where you are, not with the app, but it's the same. I'm not sure what I can do for you. But you can stay in my spare guest room tonight, and we can talk again in the morning. No promises, okay? Yes, yes, thank you so much. She hugged me again. 